news, everybody! It looks like Blizzard has finally got leveling fixed. Well, not fixed as in you can actually cap. This is a note that's been broken for like five days, but it does look, because I know what comes after that, that we can actually cap doing the campaign. And many of you are wondering, why is this important? Let's go. Why are content creators like myself doing so much stuff on leveling? Bell's done videos, Kalani's done videos, there are videos and Dan, Mr. GM, has been doing videos non-stop on the leveling process of the Shadowlands. And in fact, our own Mr. Fingal has had to level from 50 to 60 eight times without releasing any footage, despite the fact he recorded all of it along the way and just ended up deleting it. Well, that's because the game is changing in a big, big way since forever. Literally since Classic World of Warcraft, they have had to change how leveling works in the Shadowlands, and Blizzard has really been struggling to get it right. Despite, in my opinion, and you can check back in our leveling video previously, they nailed it first time, as far as I was concerned. What has changed? This time, it does not matter when you cap. This is the biggest change, okay? So in every other iteration of World of Warcraft, you had freedom. You had freedom, and once you capped, you leapt into the endgame. All the endgame stuff that existed for an expansion or even vanilla World of Warcraft all happened as soon as you hit level cap. In fact, in vanilla, it started earlier. You could do your Molten Core achievement at like level 56 or something like that, and you could get started then. However, in every other expansion after that, it didn't matter whether you capped in the first zone. You could grind dungeons if you wanted to. It didn't matter. You didn't have to do any of Hellfire Peninsula. In the next expansion of Wrath of the Lich King, they have gave you a couple of choices of where to start, but you could cap before you ever touched Ice Crown, and it didn't matter. You could then go on and start your end game journey. That is not what is happening in the Shadowlands. Now, one of the big reasons for this, in fact, the only reason this is happening, is the Covenant system. Blizzard is very, 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 very aware that they need to make sure that when players make that choice, that they kind of understand for the most part what they're picking, because they are going with the locket system. So what that means is they need to come up with a way of ensuring that people have a good amount of time to kind of get a feel for the covenants. And they're using the leveling system to do that. And what that means is it has no relevance when you cap. You can go into the first zone, which is Bastion, and you can grind to 60 through dungeons. It doesn't matter. You have to do the campaign, regardless of whether you want to PvP, do dungeons, irrelevant stuff you need to reach a certain point before the end game will open up to you if you hit level 60 you in the first zone you still have to do the campaign you have to play through all four of the zones regardless if you finish the campaign storyline and this is where it gets a little tricky and you are not level 60 the game comes to a hard stop it will not progress until you go and grind out level 60 somewhere else and this is where blizzard's really been struggling so how have they dealt with it Level Gates is one of them, and they are still in the game. I have never seen these before, but that doesn't mean they've never existed. It might just mean we've never encountered them before. Although, I mean, I, I don't think they ever existed before now, but they certainly exist now. Level Gates are something Blizzard has put in. They will simply deny you being able to continue with your campaign until you hit certain levels. Now, we've encountered these a number of times. The current one that we found is in Bastion. At Bastion, at level 50, if you do not reach level 53, the campaign will just stop. Now, at the moment, there's no message to say, hey, you need to be level 53 to continue this, or some sort of warning. The game just comes to a complete flat stop. Now, we do know these level gates do exist in every single zone in the Shadowlands, but they are trying to make sure that if you are on the right campaign quest, you should never see it. So right now, they probably just need to tweak Bastion a little bit. I hit the level gate in Bastion, but it took me just one rare mob to kill from a wanted quest poster and doing three side collect side quests the usual collect 10 of these do that to tip me over i was very very close to 53 it's just that the game did come to a complete stop however at the tail end of that if you reach the end of the campaign in the final zone which is revendreth and you are not level 60 the end game will not open up to you it will just stop until you go and grind away and get yourself to level 60. so what does this mean? Well, considering we have this mandatory road that we have to walk on, that it's only sensible that Blizzard ensures that by the time you finish that campaign, 
Because we, as players and Blizzard's developers, do not know how people level. Some people like to do every single quest. Some people don't. Some people like to do the dungeons associated with that zone. Some people don't. Some people like to PvP a lot. Some people don't. All we can say for sure is that if you are forcing players to walk down this road, which they are absolutely doing, you must complete the campaign, then that should get you to the end of wherever that road travels. And that's where they completely came unstuck for a long time and they've been tweaking it. We had a random buff of 40% extra experience come into the game. We had lots of things Blizzard was trying to do to make sure that this one road that we are definitely certain that people have to walk along will get us to that end point. And it looks like they finally managed to do it. Although, it's hard to say. Now, this has involved a lot of things because a lot of people are trying to do leveling guides and things like that. We've we even said we're going to do a video on like gun shoes and things like that. Having replayed through the leveling experience once more, what I can tell you is with war mode off, just doing the campaign. Now, I need to be clear here because this is a little misunderstanding with some people. When I say only the campaign, think about how World of Warcraft works. You might only get one of four quests in a quest hub that are actually the campaign, but you'll also get like two quests which take place in the exact same area, doing the exact same mobs. It'll fill up with all different quests to do in one area. I consider that the campaign trail. That is part of it. So with, I did it with war mode off, Finn did it with war mode on, and I traveled through. So when I got to a new hub, I picked up the quests in the immediate surrounding area that all take place in the same area. By doing that, I have reached level 60 or 59 and very shy of level 60, although I know there are several quests afterwards in perfect time. So we can relax at that. In terms of consumables you'll want to take while leveling, well, that's a little bit interesting. Now, for the most part, things like gun shoes, people have been worried they're going to get nerfed. They're actually quite good, but not all the time. They're not something that I would say were as important as they were in Battle for Azeroth for those of you who are interested in speed leveling. In fact, what you'll find is the greatest use of gun shoes is the Maw. Several times through the leveling experience, you're going to be sent to the Maw, including the opening introduction to the Shadowlands takes place in the Maw. The interesting thing about the Maw, beyond the fact that it has no content, is the fact that you can't mount there. There is an unlockable mount once you get open to Torgas, and you complete several floors of Torghast, you will unlock a mount there. But for the vast, vast majority of you, certainly at the start, you cannot mount there. And there are quite lengthy walking paths to take inside of the Maw. More than something like sprints or aspects of the Cheetah will possibly help you do. Gun shoes are fantastic there. However, when you translate into the open world, it's much less of an issue. I found a couple of great spots for gun shoes, but not an overwhelming amount. I think in the Battle for Azeroth leveling, I took with me something like 50 sets of gun shoes and used nearly all of them on my first playthrough. This time around, the way Blizzard's done the leveling is that in most zones, if there is a long journey to be taken, they'll give you an option that allows you to travel there on your own very, very quickly. Either something like a Kyrian Angel will come and take you there, or there'll be some sort of teleporter, or if you're on Meldraxxus, they'll have something that guides you there. In Revendreth, there might be a blood mirror that takes you exactly where you need to go. They've done a good job of not making these long, arduous roads that you just have to run to. Mainly because they know people don't like that. That's just downtime. It's not fun. I'm not really playing the game just because you make me walk down a long, 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 long road. This isn't classic anymore. The people don't really want to do that. And that's understandable to limit that. So I took about... I took a stack of 20 gun shoes with me and... I still had some left by the time I hit level 60. It was more than fine. Uh, it was mainly the more where I wanted to use them because they do have big open stretches of nothing and you can't mount there either. So gun shoes come in very, very handy there. I would recommend them. Same story for gliders, actually. Gliders are generally quite useful, rarely. When they can be used, it's great. Although when I leveled on my hunter, I was more than fine with just being able to disengage. So if you're playing a class that can get down off a mountain, either by disengaging, blinking, heroic leaping, something like that, I wouldn't even worry too much about getting some gliders in your readiness to get into the Shadowlands. One stack is more than enough. Some of you keep them on you at all times anyway. That's fair. How long does it take? Less than eight hours, which means if you're looking to take consumables with you into the Shadowlands, why not? They're free. They last for an hour for the most part. It's just a nice healthy buff while you're out leveling. Then you don't need much. You can get away with 10 flasks is more than enough, unless you're planning on doing a lot of grinding at some point. One stack of food is probably more than fine. Again, unless you're planning to do a lot of dungeons and expecting to die a lot, then you should be fine. 
A stack of augment runes, 10 is fine. I found it totally fine. And you might say, yeah, but it's barely in anything. It's just a one hour extra buff. You one click gives you an hour of benefit. It's well worthwhile. Even though it's minor, it's something that's just makes you a little bit stronger. So depending on the strength of your character, you're gonna get more or less benefit out of it. But considering they cost literal pennies in game now, why not? If you don't have a permanent one, go ahead and stick it on. Consumables wise, potions wise, you can get away with a good 40 potions, I would take, and just, if you want to, this is what I do, is I just macro them to my DPS cooldown. So that if I'm going to use a DPS cooldown because it's a slightly stronger enemy or I'm doing AoE, it will just naturally use a potion for me, and I don't have to worry about manually clicking them all the way through to make sure I'm getting the best benefit. If I decide to use a decent DPS cooldown on my character, so if I'm going to be a mage and I'm using combustion, or I'm using Aspects of the Eagle, or whatever it might be, then... It just naturally uses it, and I don't think about it at all after that. Do take with you some health potions, though. Shadowlands still contains these odd moments where you just suddenly get swarmed. Certainly as you level up, you'll move from even on a mythic-geared character. So my character is what would have been like 478. Uh, my character is about, around about level 58, 59 is when my gear started to become outdated but it was still good because it had gem slots and stuff in it. But that was the point where mobs started to kind of not just AoE down 40 of them, right? The, the few of them hitting me, you are going to die at that point. At that point, it does want me to bring you to gear and Azurite armor in particular. So Azurite armor is going to be dead once you enter the Shadowlands. As soon as you walk through that portal and you enter the Maw, your essences are going to be disabled and your Azurite armor is going to be disabled. Now, many of you are going to be of the opinion that means I need to get rid of my Azurite armor as soon as possible. And the answer to that is no. Obviously, the item level does matter here, but what you're going to notice is that your Azurite armor has an absolute buttload of primary stat on it. So it has a huge amount of agility, huge amounts of intellect, huge amounts of strength, and I mean absolutely dwarfs the other options that you're going to find while leveling. Azurite armor and the legendary cape for that matter are not something that you want to get rid of real quick. You should wait. You should hold on to it. You should really think about whether or not you want to swap it out for a couple of secondary stats which are rebalanced in the Shadowlands so they're somewhat less effective than what you might expect because you're going to have this enormous amount of main stat which is propping you up hugely definitely something you want to consider there overall the level experience is really quite good now it doesn't matter how you want to level i know personally i like to do every single quest the first time through just to make sure i'm not locked off later and on that note if you are going to do some side quests and it's not you're not a big fan of generally doing them honestly i would recommend that you do them in the zone that you think is likeliest to be your covenant choice because although blizzard really wants to expose you to as much of the covenants as possible there are things that they cannot show you namely the soul binds and the weekly events those are not accessible and not visible until after you have decided to choose your covenant they do give you your covenant ability they do give you your covenant signature ability but other than that, they're just going to show you the transmog and the mount you'll get. Other than that, the other stuff is just going to be locked away. Now, that's not too bad. For the most part, I think Blizzard is right in suggesting that most people aren't going to care about the Soulbinds. I don't know that for sure, but for I would suspect for a lot of people, the Soulbinds are going to be a nice little extra talent tree. Nothing more to it. Nothing to really get concerned about. Certainly not as much as us nerds are concerned about them. And when it comes to the weekly event, people might definitely be more concerned about those as they're more involved but they don't actually affect your character in any way. You might find them not enjoyable, but Blizzard certainly does want you to create alts of different covenants so you can experience their story and do their weekly event. The weekly events do not reflect onto your player power in any way. They're just a fun side activity you can do or not do at your leisure. That means they're not overly concerned with showing it you too much. However, in order to get a lot of the weekly event stuff done, it's going to involve characters that take place in the side quest. This is going to be super noticeable if you choose to go Venthyr. In order to do the Venthyr Vampire Party, you need to go around and you need to invite people. You literally need to give them their ticket, their invites to come to the party. In the early days, a lot of this is invites to people that are part of the Revendreth leveling side quests. That means that once you get there and you just want to give them your invite, they're not going to respond to you until you do their side quest chain. So you might as well get that done while leveling if you're going to be Revendreth. The same story can be had with Maldraxxus and Bastion and of course the Ardenweald. So if you are going to choose Covenant or you're pretty confident about where to do it, do the side quest while you're leveling up. Why not? Some free extra experience and you should be good to go. Overall, really happy with this. Bear in mind though, 
no matter what your leveling path is, you must understand that this has changed dramatically from every other aspect of World of Warcraft. Being level capped on your first character is not the defining thing to enter the end game. There is now a hard wall that is only accessible once you hit cap. This brings us to the Fate Scribe. The Fate Scribe is a really interesting system, but you must understand how it works, guys. So the Fate Scribe, once you have already done one character, so your main character, launch of Shadowlands, you turbo nerd it, you cap it, then you want to get started in your alt. Once you arrive in Oribos, after doing your introduction to the Shadowlands on that alt character, the Fate Scribe is going to come and talk to you. The Fate Scribe is going to ask you one of two things. Hey, how do you want to level? Do you want to do the campaign again? Or do you want to jump straight to the end game? Now, what this is, is allowing you to level your character by doing end game activities like Torghast, by doing world quests, by doing grinds for renown, all the things that actually contribute to your player power that normally, if this was any other version of World of Warcraft, you would only be able to do after you hit level 60. So this is a cool idea that Blizzard's come up with and one they've been really struggling with from a technical point of view because this constantly at the moment phases people accidentally into that end game thing and therefore they can't actually continue that campaign. Now undoubtedly this will be fixed on launch but this is the option the fate scribe is going to give you now understand how this works guys so if you decide i don't really know what covenant i want to be a part of because if you choose the fate scribe you have to pick your covenant straight away so you could realistically on your alt be level 50 do your introduction to the shadowlands be taken to Oribos, the fate scribe will come to you and you could say I'm going to be a Night Fae on this character because I want to check out that weekly quest or whatever your reasoning might be. And he will go, okay, go and choose Night Fae. At that point, it auto-completes all of the stuff that you would need to do for the campaign. Even if you're level 50, once you've decided to go with the end game option and choose your covenant, you cannot go back. You cannot say, actually, this is really boring. I don't really want to do world quest to level. I don't really want to grind in Torghast or whatever it might be. I'd actually prefer to go and do the campaign. You can't. You can't switch back. Conversely, if you say, I want to do the campaign because, who knows, I'm not really sure what covenant I want to be, I want to try out various covenant spells, whatever it might be, and you choose to go to the campaign, but then halfway through, you're 55, or maybe even 59, or perhaps the way you leveled, you hit level 60, but you're still like part of the way through one of the campaign zones, it's still not going to open up the end game to you until you finish the Revendreth campaign. What you can do at any time, though, is go back to Oribos, speak to the Fate Scribe, and say, I am ready to move to the end game now. Okay? So you can do that at any point. So let's suppose you are uncertain about the Covenant. You've heard about, say, you're a paladin. You've heard about Divine Toll. Sounds awesome. But I kind of want to check out that Blessing of Seasons that comes from Ardenweald. So you start leveling the campaign as you would have done on your fresh character. You play through Bastion. You kind of like Divine Toll. Then the game sends you off to Ardenweald. You try that out. And you're like, oh, actually, I, yeah, Divide Soul's the one for me, and you're only level 54. If you stick with the campaign path, you can't move to the end game until you finish Revendreth, which you personally have no interest in. What you can do is go back to Oribos and say, okay, I've made my choice. I now want to move to the end game. You'll speak to the Fate Scribe and you'll say, I'm ready. And he will move you to the end game. You cannot go back. Because at that point, once you've decided to move to the end game, you are flagged as having your covenant selected. You can't go back. So if it's a case of what you can't do, I guess is the best explanation, is you can't do some campaign quests. Then you're like, oh, I kind of want to go and do some world quests with my friends on this character rather than my main because I don't need them on my main. So I'm going to swap over and I'm going to help out my uh, friends and do some world quests and stuff with them. Then I'm going to go back to doing campaign leveling because I prefer to solo play. You can't do that. Okay, once you've decided with the Fate Scribe that you're moving to the end game, your character is literally flagged and moved forward so you can no longer go back. Because at that point, of course, you've already chosen a covenant, you've already been through that process, and you can't go back and then redo it. That's not going to work at all. So bear in mind how that works, guys. Enjoy your leveling experience of the Shadowlands. I hope we've covered everything you need to know, and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.